Good evening to you and welcome to the Uganda Catholic Television. I am Sunday Gloria Aboch with the Thursday edition of UCTV News. As we, as we begin with, the 2023 primary living examinations have been released, indicating a drop in performance in all subjects compared to the previous year, 2022. Proportionally, male candidates have performed better than the females. However, girls have performed better than boys in English with 90.64% pass level compared to the boys who are 88.32%. But the reverse is true for the other three subjects, which include SST, science and mathematics. According to the results, 47,452 boys passed in Division 1, representing 13% compared to 39,130 girls in Division 1 one representing 9.99 percent a total of 164,906 boys were in division 2 compared to 171,601 girls 69,870 boys were in grade 3 while 86,000 while 86,420 girls were in the same grade, a total of 749,254 candidates from 15,859 centers registered for PLE in the 2023 compared to 832,654 in 2022. Of these, 501,602 from 11,000 1,365 centers were from universal primary education beneficiaries and 247,652 of the candidates were non-UPE candidates. And now, while speaking at State House at the release of the results, Dan Odongo, the UNEB Executive Director, paid tribute and commended the joint efforts of the police and the military uh, heads who supported security during the examination writing. Take a look. Ma'am, I want to thank the Inspector General of, of Police. They gave me a team of senior police officers uh, to work with during this examination period and also the chief of the defense forces also gave me a team from the military uh, police that greatly assisted us in the distribution and overseeing the security of examinations at the storage stations in the field and also during the marking exercise. Mama, the, the, the force's way of greeting is to salute. And with your permission, I would like to invite Superintendent of Police Francis Akabwai and Brigadier General uh, Bainambu Gishad, Commandant of the Military Police who are here, to just step forward and greet you before I proceed. I don't think Mama has seen you. You are far behind. If you <laughs> kindly step in the open so that... Mama, these are the persons representing the two forces that helped us greatly during the examination, and the board and management extremely grateful to them. Mom, I also want to thank the district leaders, the chief administrative officers, district and urban education officials, monitors, scouts, and invigilators for their participation and support in the field conduct of the examination, and also the examiners who took time to mark these examinations. Honorable Minister, I wish in a very special way to appreciate the staff from the Uganda National Examinations Board Secretariat who always rise to the occasion to serve their country with dedication and hard work. Mama, these are the unsung heroes. 
I also like, with your permission, to allow them to step in front and take a, a bow so that you see the ones who are representing the others who are here. Mama, they are led by the director examinations on your extreme left. And the others are representing the directorate of examinations and the public relations office. In accordance with section 5, subsection 2B of the UNEB Act 2021, the board will withhold the results of the suspects pending completion of investigations where there will be a prima facie case, the board's tribunal, the Examination Security Committee, will accord all the affected candidates a fair hearing before making final decisions as to whether the results will be released um, when the tribunal maybe does not find sufficient evidence or that the results will be cancelled when there is sufficient evidence to, for that effect. After the conclusion of the hearings by the board's tribunal, the list of districts and schools with council results will be published. Mama, I know the press will be itching to ask me how many of these have been withheld. As I have said, it is premature at this time because tribunal may release results, some of these results that are withheld, and it will be an erroneous statistic to say so many uh, uh, are affected when some may be released. So this information will be given at due time. I now comment briefly on the report on the work of candidates uh, in the course of marking examiners observed as they have done, areas where candidates showed weaknesses. These observations have uh, been compiled and will be produced in a document which we call Report on the Work of Candidates. And it will contain advice to the teachers on how to handle the areas that have been identified. All stakeholders, particularly the teachers, are urged to utilize this report because, Mama, this report contains very, very useful information that will help improve the teaching learning in all the four subjects. Still from UNEB, the Minister for Education and Sports, Janet Kataha Museveni, acclaimed the special calling for teachers and noted the, de the decrease in numbers of candidates who registered to sit for the primary living examinations and revealed that the 2024 cohort of primary seven and senior four candidates will be the last group to use the abridged curriculum. I wish to first of all thank God for the very gift of life and for a new year. And that uh, he is so gracious to us that we all are here. None of us is missing. We must remember to thank him for his faithfulness. He has indeed enabled us as a ministry and as a country to complete the 2023 school calendar activities now culminating in the release of the 2023 primary living examination results. We thank God for the lives of our children, their parents and teachers who have worked with them throughout their primary education cycle. We also condole with the families that may have lost their children to one cause or another, as well as teachers who passed away on duty. The calling upon teachers, is a, uh, the calling on teachers, we must always remember, is a special calling. It is unique because it is sacrificial and much cannot be accomplished 
in the learner's time in school when the teacher is unavailable. You all heard for yourselves the statement of release of results by the executive director of UNEP. I note that the number of learners who were registered for the PLE in 2023 decreased compared with what we had in 2022, and you had the explanation for that. The decrease was anticipated as an impact of COVID-19 on the education system started to win, and so is the distortion in enrollment in the pre-primary seven classes, especially P6. The major COVID-19 recovery intervention that is still underway in the education sector is implementation of the abridged curriculum. I have been informed by the National Curriculum Development Center that the P7 and S4 cohorts of 2024 are the last classes of learners utilizing the abridged curriculum. Thereafter, we shall be using the full primary school curriculum and the revised O-level curriculum after this year. I am happy to see that this year the negative development of absentee candidates to PLE has been reversed. In fact, the rate has come down to the lowest level compared to the previous five years as you had Mr. Odong inform us and inform the country. Nonetheless, 1.6% or 12,000 pupils who were absent remains a large number. When a child fails to show up for the end of cycle examination, it is a wastage of that life which had spent six to now seven years, and then the government spent the resources for the entire education system, and then the families who are working with these children. When this child doesn't sit their exam, it is truly a pity, a pity for the whole system. Therefore, I reiterate the appeal I made last year to the parents and to the teachers to ensure that a child who has been registered to sit their end of cycle examination does not miss doing so. And away from UNEP to other news, the Katikiri of Uganda, Charles Peter Maiga, has asked the graduates to acquire hands-on experience before starting their own jobs. This was at the 18th graduation ceremony of Buganda Royal Institute of Business and Technical Education at Mengo, where 1,379 students were awarded diplomas and certificates in various disciplines. It's a graduating class but a collection of individuals who have invested their time, dedication, and passion towards their education goals. Today they start a new chapter, equipped with the knowledge and skills imparted by this institution. So I call upon you to take a moment and reflect on your journey, the challenges you face the victories you celebrated and the learning you undertook. And I extend my heartfelt congratulations to each graduate. Your hard work, perseverance and commitment have brought you to this pivotal moment of your lives. And I believe you are the embodiment of the excellence that the Kingdom strives for and I'm confident that you will carry that spirit forward as you venture out in the world. Like those who spoke before me, I invite all of you to thank and acknowledge the vision of our King when it pleased him to start this institute. 
And I also salute the council members and members of the teaching and non-teaching staff who have played a key role in shaping the success of this institute over the last 25 years. Their commitment to education, innovativeness, and creating an enabling environment has greatly contributed to the achievements we celebrate today. We all know that the future of any society depends on the caliber of its youth. And equipping the youth with knowledge and skills is a result of intentional efforts. Hence, I express my gratitude to all the partners who have rendered us support here at Buganda Royal Institute as we endeavor to skill the generations of the future. Key among them is Uganda Communications Commission, as you heard. And, uh, and uh, there is an institute in Nakawa called, no, not UCC, the Directorate of Industrial Training, DIT, among others. Vocational institutions provide training geared towards producing hands-on workers, people who can innovate on their own. The country needs people who are practical, whose personal skills can earn them a living. But hear me, hear me out. I intentionally avoid calling upon you to go out and create jobs. I intentionally avoid that. Because you need to work with those who have experience in the field where you have acquired skills first. In any case, every successful enterprise must employ workers to serve in its different departments. So the talk about being job creators skips the need for anyone with skills like you to acquire experience first before they venture out on their own. Having said that, I call upon you to work hard and to use these newly acquired skills to add value wherever you may be. The 25th anniversary of the Institute is a testament to the institution's objective of transforming lives and making a positive impact on society. At this stage, as we mark 25 years of this institution, we should envision what we wish to achieve in the next 10 to 25 years and then plan accordingly. That's the task on the hands of the management council, of the governing council and of management. Dear graduates, as you embark on the next phase of your journey, remember the values instilled in you by this institute. Be curious, be resilient in the face of challenges. Continue to learn, continue to grow. Like you've been told by the previous speakers, you are not just leaving the certificate or diploma, but with the power to choose between right and wrong and to make a positive change in the world. I can assure you the world needs individuals like you who are equipped with knowledge, but we want people who have concern for others. Dishonesty and shortcuts bring about but only temporary victories. May the 25 years be marked by even greater achievements and may the graduates continue to make their alter matter Proud. Women in the informal sector have protested being excluded from the recently concluded G77 and NAM summits which took place at Speak Resort Munyonyo. These claim to have suffered losses after the government closed their businesses in the course of making the city and its highways more visually appealing to the delegates. Speaking to our reporter, Olive Namazi, the city minister for health at the Kampala City Council, 
Authority and Women Councillor Funakawa A accused government of closing its eyes on the informal sector during the summits and yet their businesses were also bound to benefit from the twin summits. Most of them have lost their businesses, most of them have, have, have their businesses have been closed, others have been destroyed. There's a woman who had been in Dubai and the house had been destroyed because they are preparing for the NAM summit. So I see the NAM summit as something that really, uh, that, that, that you have not benefited in. It has been on the high end of the city. Uh, people people in our markets like Owino, the women in uh, different markets like Gaba and all those places, they have not been able to benefit from the NAM summit. And chose to take those people in the high end areas. They cannot, they have not in any way tried to make sure that our local people have a feel of the visitors and also the visitors have a feel of our local people and the women they are doing the local work most of the women in kampala they are in the informal sector not in the elite sector the elite women who have benefited from the nam summit are the ministers are the permanent secretaries those people who are up there benefited instead most of them have lost the vendors have lost their workspaces some of them they have been chased away from the roads it, 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 the government of Uganda has launched a comprehensive set of regulations to govern public procurement and the disposal of assets across all government agencies and local governments. The Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Assets Authority Restructuring, Procurement Planning Guidelines, Rules and Procedures of Acquiring Supplies, Contracts and Negotiations are some of the salient features of the new regulations. Of all these measures are intended to promote more equitable and expeditious public procurement while also lowering overall operating costs. Henry Musa the Minister of State in charge of general duties highlighted that the new regulations will facilitate the direct procurement of manufacturers of aviation, industrial, agricultural and medical equipment. There will be no more middlemen. If you are procuring equipment and we know where the manufacturer is, we shall now be these regulations now allow us to go direct to the manufacturer without necessarily having Dr. Kawagambe in the middle, who will at the end of the day put his margin and as a result public procurement becomes so, so, so bureaucratic and unnecessarily expensive. We need to prioritize timely procurement without compromising on the quality and fiscal responsibility. The timeliness coming directly from manufacturers where possible reduce these middlemen, so many middlemen in the chain. And the president was clear on this, please. Those who procure especially equipment, uh, you are going to procure some uh, road making, this road construction equipment. I see my senior is around. I always tell him. The president directed. He was actually saying, I'm going to put it in writing. Is the use of own resources for public works under force account mechanism. This one has also been addressed in the regulations and from now on there is no you see you know what the law the what if you have your own money under this arrangement, you will now directly be allowed to execute the, the work without necessarily going through the bureaucracy we have been going through. Also informed that other concerns of the President on the procurement of strategic requirements guiding the, the, the distinction 
between investment and procurements and the issue of payment of commission in procurement processes are also being handled. The authority has also issued 10 guidelines on various aspects under the PPDA regulations 2023, such as thresholds, bid and performance securities, among others. The Permanent Secretary, Stroke Secretary to the Treasury, has indicated that the provision for reservation schemes to the special interest groups of women, youth and persons with disabilities, sustainable procurement will contribute to the social economic transformation through increase in household income and the creation of wealth. This is what we have been struggling with. Need times when you start a procurement and when you contract. Clear statutory timelines have been put at different levels. Uh, the fourth one is to promote the use of, of uh, procurement as a social economic tool, uh, e.g. sustainable procurement. And this is where uh, all our instruments, procurement instruments, are providing for sustainable uh, public procurement. You're watching UCTV News. Let's take a look at Today in History. And with that segment, UCTV News takes a break and will be back. Stay tuned. UCTV, good news for all. Catch incredible stories of the day. Success. You can manage that money. With a topping of inspiration. Get interested in people, not interested in yourself. Inspire, achieve, repeat. You are watching UCTV, good news for all. For this and more, tune in to Kasese Get Radio 100.5 in Western Region, located at the hill of the Diocese of Kasese. KGR brings you all Catholic programs and an advertising platform in all our radio shows like Good Morning Renzori, Chama Toboka, Ukute, The Business Show, Propeller, The Request Show and Sports, Evaluation, Bahinga Bakuluka, 
Late Night Show, and many others. Our other services include Isuzu Tipa, a no car, public address system, live band, Omoke Kera, an audio recording studio, and outside live broadcast. For more information, call 0773-597-166 or visit our website www.kasesegatradio.com Kasesegat Radio Omusondoria, the voice of truth. It's unbelievable. Now, companies, businesses, and organizations can make bulk payments easily with Centenary Bank's Corporate Center Swift to anyone without the need of a bank account anywhere, anytime, just like that. The recipient needs only their phones, national ID, and token number received via SMS to withdraw money from any center agent nearby. The Centenary Bank's Corporate Center Swift is simple, secure, and convenient. You think it's too good to be true? Visit any of our branches countrywide or visit www.centenarybank.co.uk to know more. Centenary Bank. Centenary Bank is a member center group regulated by the Bank of Uganda. Customer deposits of up to 10 million shillings are protected by the Deposit Protection Fund of Uganda. Terms and conditions apply. UCTV. Good news for all. And in the sporting world, the 2024 FUBA Basket League has been launched with the first game kicking off tomorrow at the MTN Arena in Lugogo with the finalists. KIU Titans will be taking on Namuongo Blazers as Semugenze Mustafa brings us the details. Welcome to the 2024 FUBA Stambig Fairway NBO League Basketball League. Um, as you know, we begin with appreciating our partners, uh, Sabic Bank, uh, uh, NBA Sport, uh, Media House. Uh, we've got Fairway, um, Madame Daniela. We've got uh, Flavio Kecho representing Sabic Bank. We have got uh, Patience here, uh, representing the players from uh, NBA, ladies from UPDA basketball team. I'm Baker Chamba Denjuchi, Vice President taking Kofuba. What would you expect? As you'll be able to receive the fixture going on right now, tip off is tomorrow. Uh, we're doing it in Lugogo, as always been using Lugogo, and also be using YMCA and a few other venues like KIU, uh, UCU. Uh, there's um, some few areas that are being vetted, like uh, Abuja Park. And if those partners should come through, we'll be able to come through and be able to, share, to enjoy this basketball game. The tickets will be on FlexiPay, um, 10,000 shillings uh, every ticket on the app or using mobile money. But players and students will be paying 5,000 shillings. So maybe that's another clarity that a lot of people would like to know out there. It's very easy uh, to get the app and to get registered on FlexiPay and it's also very easy to just pick up your phone and dial star 290 and get working. So well, Having the first game is a little tricky because it puts you on a bit of pressure but again it's good that you have to open the season because you get to display yourselves and show what you've been doing in the camp. Uh, as the Lady Tomahawks we've been doing our all and we have been going harder than usual because we came up here to compete, not to just participate. In fact, I want to take Flavia's championship this year. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, I just hope that we'll do our best because we are ready to do our best. And with the sports report, we, are, we appreciate you for being a part of our news tonight. Do stay tuned for more programming still comes your way. I'm Sunday Gloria Abwatch. Good night.